Hello there. Could have done out like this on YouTube, but I saw somebody with a very old cornet a few days ago. Um, I collect them. And this is probably one of the older ones in my collection. It's an Anthony Courtois. Um, quite an early one actually. Uh, it's Koenig's model. Um, serial number on it, um, I think it's 4034. I know that 47 was 1860, so there's a chance it could be before that. Um, I know it's pre 1870 because the sole importers, uh, Samuel Arthur Chapel uh, and Co., late Julian and Co., or whoever they were, were the sole importers to the UK of this instrument. And their address at this period in time when this instrument were brought in was 214 Regent Street. Uh, later models, a new Bond Street. Um, came across this in an auction, it didn't sell, it's in reasonably good condition to be honest, um, there's bits of silver plate missing everywhere, also the other thing is Cotswell are very very good at putting all the uh, awards on the bell and as you can see you've, you've only really got this one which is one of the first ones I got, I don't know but the later ones the, the engraving goes right back here somewhere, but anyway um, it is playable which is unusual well, I don't know unusual, but it seems to play reasonably well. Like I said, a little bit of recommissioning work done on it. All the slides and everything work an absolute treat on it. Um, um, it came with its original case as well, which was a bit lucky. And uh, a couple of little bits like a, a tuning bit. Um, uh, B natural shank. I've got B flat shank in here and a Dennis Wick mouthpiece. And uh, it's original uh, Courtois mouthpiece as well. Uh, a couple of crooks missing, but then again, we try to find an instrument that's got everything complete at that age. So, let's see what it goes like. Plays reasonably in tune, it's got a lovely sound to it. Probably sound rubbish on this because I'm doing it on the phone. But you can still play pretty technically on it um, without tripping up myself too much. This is the Courtois in its case. As you can see here on this very poorly focused video, that I'm trying to do on my video camera, we've got the Courtois, the actual cornet, we've got the mouthpiece. Got the B natural shank, the little tuning bit there, and under the instrument here, you can see we've got the B flat shank. Now, I'm trying to get this somewhere in the not in the light so you can actually see what it is, but I can't get my camera to focus on it correctly. I'll have to hold it between my legs or something like that, and let's see if we can just sharpen that focus up a little bit. There we are. That's a bit better, isn't it? I still can't read it because of the glint on the bell. But never mind, there's, uh, I'll probably type it up in the text below what it says. A lot of it is in French. The only bit in English is the last little bit here, which says, Samuel Arthur Chapel, late Julien and Co. Sole Agents, 214 Regent Street, London. That became Liberties in the 1870s, did 214 Regent Street. You can see with the instrument, it's in reasonably good nick. A um, little bit of a crease on the bell there, a few little dints on the lead pipe, um, bits of chrome missing here and there. The only addition I've actually done to this instrument is a little bit of blue tack around there because that cork was quite badly cracked. I've not actually got round to re-corking the instrument, I've had it quite a lot of years now. Um, but my theory is if it plays alright, try and keep it as original as you can. Just have a little look round at this. Um, it is, well, you can see where the plate's rubbed off, just where people have been rubbing it, where your hand rests on the instrument. It even does that on new instruments. The valve top's in reasonably good condition. And if I can hold this and do this at the same time, the actual serial number is actually stamped under the valve, the actual top of the valve. Um, which you can just about make it out there 
not very well on the camera. It actually says 4240, so I was wrong, it was 404 something. Um, I know that I think it was 47 was 1860, so it does make it quite an early core to our instrument. This um, the valves have no felts on them, they're normally cork tops and corks underneath. They do rattle, there is a little bit of play in them, they're probably not as airtight as uh, they would be on a newer instrument, but you can compensate for that in your playing. Usually, as far as valve oil is concerned, I use a standard valve oil on this. I clean it, if I'm going to play it, I tend to chuck it in a bucket of water and let it soak for a bit and use washing up liquid and water on the valves, it works an absolute treat takes up any of the air leaks in the valves and keeps them actually reasonably slick anyway, that's enough of that, I'm going to pop that back in the case here are all the clumps and bangs, sorry about seeing my feet in here but that there is the Anthony Cortois anyway, as I was saying, it is quite a nice instrument to play, um, I'm not been playing I've not been playing for 10 years, I decided to go back in for it, but never mind. That's enough for me waffling on about brass instruments for one night. Um, if I get a lot of people interested in this, I've got quite a collection of stuff from the 1800s and, and early 1900s. Uh, I'll put some more on. If I find anything out about any of these cornets, I'll update you. And hopefully my playing's going to get a bit better than it is. Because, like I say, it's been about 10 years since I've last done any serious playing. Uh, certainly 10 years since I last played in a brass band. Anyway, all the best. Good night.